Chambers is the 14th NBA player to score 60 or more in a game. There was an ugly scene in minor league hockey last night. Fans in Seattle reacted to what they saw as a cheap shot by a visiting Portland player and a brawl developed behind the Portland bench. As fans threw punches and then grabbed hockey the stick. sticks, the melee escalated. And they had problems before. Someone has got to get control here. Brian Shaw is here representing the Western Hockey League, the governor. Back and forth, David. And officials of the Western the Hockey League will review sticks. this tape to determine oh what goodness, action will be taken. Seattle won the first round playoff game 9-2. to two. Once again, nobody won the fight. There were a lot of losers. No hockey has broken out so far at our boxing site in Corpus Christi, Texas. We're set to go there now for today's junior featherweight fight. So let's join Marv Albert and the fight doctor, Ferdy Pacheco. The WBA junior featherweight champion is 26-year-old Jesus Salou. As a pro, he's compiled an impressive record and earned a reputation as a devastating puncher. A Filipino, Salou now lives in San Diego. But it was in the island paradise of Hawaii that he grew up and fought most of his professional bouts. So it was inevitable, given his fierce punching power, the connection would be made. And the nickname would stick. But this Hawaiian punch rarely leaves opponents refreshed. Now the obvious question. <laughs> hey, how about a nice Hawaiian punch? Sure. It's Jesus, the Hawaiian punch salute. Today on Sports World. Yes, the Hawaiian punch has made his way to Corpus Christi, Texas. We are at the Memorial Coliseum for a scheduled 10-round junior featherweight bout featuring the WBA champion Jesus Salud going against hometown product Jesse Benavides. Hi, everybody. I'm Marv Albert, and I'd like to point out right at the start that this is a non-title bout with much controversy swirling around this matchup. After the Salud Benavides title fight was put together. The WBA ruled that Salud should instead face number one contender Luis Mendoza in Mendoza's home country, Colombia in South America. The Salud camp argued that Mendoza had lost to former champion Juan Jose Estrada, a man that Salud defeated. Thus, they felt that Mendoza should not remain the number one contender. They felt the WBA was looking after its own interests. In addition, with the current political climate in Colombia, there are other concerns. Well, we don't we don't want to go to Colombia to fight because we were you know concerned about the fighters and our safety. Uh, we have an advisories, in fact, two advisories from uh, offices in Washington stating that, you know, we can go if we want to go, but uh, there, we have advisories advising us not to go, that it's not safe, and uh, uh, the decision or uh, what happens down there notwithstanding, we're more concerned about the safety of uh, our personal being. The end result, Jesus Salud may be stripped of his title by the WBA, and if he is, Salud's camp has threatened legal action. As always on NBC Boxing Telecast, we are joined by the fight doctor, Ferdy Pacheco. Ferdy, what is your reaction to all this? Well, I think this is another one of those ongoing difficulties between a world boxing organization making an unreasonable demand on a champion. He had a contract to ask him to break it, to ask him to take a number one contender, which is in reality not a number one contender, and worse than that, to fight the contender in his own home country. Uh, I think Salud's people should be applauded in turning that down, even though they're risking their title, because Colombia is very, very torn by strife right now, and they would risk the life of the fighter and the camp. That's not worth that. Uh, I do believe, however, that Salud should offer to fight their number one contender wherever in the world they want outside of Colombia. So today there are two battles taking place involving Jesus Salud, one against the WBA and the other in the ring oh. against Jesse Benavides. Now, Benavides is the hometown favorite, born and raised here in Corpus Christi. He's had an illustrious amateur career, three-time National Golden Gloves champion, the professional record 28-1, and 22 by knockout. He is a southpaw, but Salud has been very effective against southpaw fighters. When we come back, we'll visit with the Hawaiian punch, Jesus Salud.
This is NBC's Sports World. And today it's brought to you by Castrol GTX, engineered for today's smaller cars. By U.S. Navy, you and the Navy full speed ahead. By Budweiser, beach with age for that clean, crisp taste. This Bud's for you. And by Nissan, built for the human race. In today's higher revving and hotter running engines. I crest the dentist's choice because healthy gums are important to healthy teeth. Jesse Benavides, Asus Salud, in the process of limbering up, getting ready. Asus Salud, a 26-year-old who now lives in San Diego, born in the Philippines, and later moved at age seven with his family, five brothers and two sisters, to Hawaii, a place that he calls his adopted home. The island of Hawaii and boxing hold a certain love affair for Jesus Salou. But for his boxing career to flourish, Jesus and his family had to leave the paradise of Hawaii and journey to the coast of San Diego. A difficult transition for the Salud family. It was tough, um, a tough decision. You know, uh, my trainer, Wes, manager Wes Wambo, told me it was for you. It's tough because you know you got a um, you know different life here in San Diego, and it, it's tough. You know, living with family and friends, and after that, it was. It was um, like we got attached to San Diego. He's also become attached to the Fifth Avenue Boxing Club, where he spent most of his time under the tutelage of his trainer, Wes Wombo, the man that many observers feel is the reason for Jesus' improvement. I've said this before, he's, he was like a sponge, and he's still like a sponge. He just uh, you know, absorbs everything you try and get him to do, and uh, he does it all on his own and uh, with a lot of effort and work on his part. But he encountered some misfortune against Mario Gomez. He broke his collarbone in a freak accident, a very disappointing loss since he was ahead on all the judges' cards. So Salud went back to the gym and regrouped. Two years later, he fought for the championship against Juan Jose Estrada. But Jesus had to overcome repeated low blows by the champion and then find a way to counter the situation. I just kept my cool, not, not do the same thing. They might penalize me real quick, you know. So what I did is um, I just try to protect myself. And the last one, he, he definitely chose real low and hurt me real bad. Jesus became the WBA junior featherweight champion as Juan Jose Estrada was disqualified for the excessive low blow. That is next accolade. The 1989 Hawaiian Athlete of the Year Award, where he defeated his childhood friend, sumo wrestling champion Konoshiki. But Jesus will not sit back on his laurels. He is back in the gym with his sights set on today's opponent, Corpus Christi's Jesse Benavides. I'm just going to focus on winning this, um, the big W, that's all I'm going to do. I'm just going to go in there, relax as, I, as usual, and just like when I fought for the world title, when we were in the dressing room, I was, I was so relaxed. That's the main thing, just go in there, relax, and take my time, and, uh, and we'll see how it goes. But today, Jesus Salud comes in as the slight underdog against Jesse Benavides. It is a homecoming for Benavides. In a moment, we'll visit with Jesse and some of his friends who have helped bring the city of Corpus Christi into boxing prominence. So your little brother's joining us, huh? He's not so little anymore. All right, now let's move it! He's what, 19? White setting, 540, F-14. Jeff's landing planes? Four gear lens set? No. $40 million jets. Today's Navy. High-tech training that takes you only one way. Full speed ahead. Primary's off. Good job, guys. You and the Navy! Jeff? See? He's not so little anymore. Full speed ahead! Unlike ordinary lawnmowers, every John Deere walk behind comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee. Which means you could mow every lawn in a town the size of Granville, Iowa. 
population 317. And if you still didn't like your John Deere more, you could still take it back. The 30-day money-back guarantee from John Deere. If you want to get here, or here, Is your car shaking, rattling, or rolling? Whether it's alignment, shocks, or struts, Midas uses top technology to diagnose the problem and top technicians to fix it. For suspension or alignment, nobody beats Midas. Nobody. The bill's twice as big as usual. Because, honey, you ate twice as much. With extra strength, Tum ZX, even twice the heartburns, no sweat. It's twice as strong, twice as fast as regular Rolaids. They're bad. They're dirty. And they're out of control. It's a showdown in Mocha. Monster truck racing with a legendary big wolf. Plus one reason. Demolition Derby. And the incredible stunts of Daredevil Spanky Spangler. The U.S. Hot Rod Association Mud and Monster Truck Super Challenge. Next Saturday on NBC. Welcome back to the Memorial Coliseum, Corpus Christi, the crowd awaiting the entrance of Jesse Benavides, the latest in a string of world-class fighters who have emerged from here in Corpus. Corpus Christi is a city of about 250,000. Its economy is based on oil. In the mid-80s, layoffs in the industry hit the city hard. Now the community leaders are working hard to enhance the city's image in hopes of attracting tourism. But thus far, most of Corpus Christi's national attention has come from its outstanding boxing talent. Lupe Suarez, Jesse Benavides, Frankie Warren, and Roberto Elizondo all grew up in Corpus, and each has received national TV exposure. Jesse Benavides is the latest to shine. Well, seeing them and, and all this, their success that they had and, and national attention that they received uh, made me want it even more. It's, uh, we're, all, we're all good friends, but we're all very competitive as well. The boys grew up as neighbors, living and learning in modest surroundings. Little has changed in the old neighborhood. The streets are as unforgiving now as they were then, and the local boys' club still serves as a place to escape and learn practical skills. I came to the boys' club just to... Uh, try to defend myself from the neighborhood because the neighborhood was tough. I didn't plan on making a career. And it was great sparring together and everything. We were real good, real good friends, all of us. The friendships endure, and the education wasn't confined to jabs and hooks. The lessons learned still serve them today. Learned everything here, uh, mostly from my coach, my parents. And the way we fought here, you know, we learned this is life here but you have to work towards a lot, you know, to get to where you want to get. Despite having lost his two championship to opportunities, Luffy Suarez still holds on to his dream and continues to fight. Frankie Warren had a title shot, but came up short and has retired. Roberto Elizondo gave it his best in two championship bouts, but it wasn't enough. Well, that's the one problem with the uh, Corpus Christi fighters that they always take on the best. You know, like me, I fought Arguello for the world title. Arguello, when I fought him, was in his prime, considered to be one of the best fighters pound for pound. It was hard for me to beat Arguello. I mean, he had more knockouts than I did fights. In all, the Corpus pros are 0-5 in world title fights. Jesse Benavides hopes a victory today will bring him closer to his shot. But regardless of what happens to him, chances are he won't be the last from Corpus to try. Hopefully there will be some other young and up-and-coming fighters coming up uh, after me. Uh, I'm sure there is because Corpus Christi has always had, even since before Elizondo, there was a lot of talent here in town. It just wasn't really brought out or wasn't noticed. So I think uh, the future is bright. And here comes Jesse Benavides. The crowd reacts. Today, an important step for Benavides as he seeks a title shot. The native of 
Corpus Christi making his way into the ring. We'll be back with the fight after these words from your local station. is attempting to make itself earthquake proof go real estate shopping in the stars playground malibu and talk with japanese director akira kurosawa plus we will preview hollywood's big night the oscars as today comes to you live from l.a monday morning uncle lou what do you think of that new diet pepsi what are you nuts i love this new diet pepsi so much better than diet coke that i would rather you drop the bowling ball on my tongue than i don't have my diet pepsi i'd rather have a, a rash that i can't reach i'd rather my mother-in-law come back to life Ooh. I would rather eat lint than not have my Diet Pepsi. You understand? Yeah, you love the new Diet Pepsi. <sighs> what? New Diet Pepsi with 100% NutraSweet, the taste that beats Diet Coke. The Love Bug, Sunday night at 7 on TV 10. We're back at the Memorial Coliseum, Corpus Christi. We're moments away from fight time and Ferdy this a matchup of a knockout puncher and Jesus Salou going against Jesse Benavides a stylist particularly as an amateur who has suddenly located punching power yeah at first when he came out of the amateurs he was just bipping and bobbing he was always a fine boxer they got Tony Ayala to teach him how to punch it turn it and he turned into a 72 percent knockout puncher that's pretty good but Salud is a pure puncher, a devastating puncher with either hand. So what we got here is a chess player with a pistol against a cannon about ready to go off. And the uh, crowd did not react well to the Hawaiian punch as he made his way. It is strictly a Benavides crowd. For the introductions, let's go to the ring announcer. Here is David Donaldson. Ladies and gentlemen, in the blue corner, at 124 pounds, wearing the crunk trunks with the gold and red trim, with 28 wins and only one defeat and 22 by knockout. Ladies and gentlemen, from Corpus Christi, the United States Boxing Association, junior featherweight champion, Jesse Benavida. Ladies and gentlemen, in the red corner, at 124 pounds, wearing the gold trunks and the green trim, with 33 wins, and only three to beat, 16 knockouts, by way of San Diego, California, from Honolulu, Hawaii, let's welcome the Hawaiian punch. Listen up. So the referee, Steve Crossan, out of Dallas. Slight height advantage for Jesus Salud. And the slight reach advantage for Salud, who comes in at 33 and 3, 16 by knockout. His last fight, Salud winning a 10 round decision against Roberto Granciosa in Honolulu. While Benavides in his last fight back February the 6th in Memphis won a 10-round decision against Jose Soto. The 10-point must system in effect. Three judges handling the scoring. John Whitley, Corpus Christi, Dickie Cole from Dallas, David McCullough out of Houston. No standing eight count. There is a mandatory eight count in effect. Three knockdown rule is in effect, and the bell saves the fighter only in the final round. Salud facing the lefty. Benavides said he'd had no trouble with uh, lefties. He's trained with them all his life in, in Hawaii. He worked out with Andy Gannigan, and he has no problem with lefties. Right now, he's showing no motion to the outside or to the left. And the expected uh, punch out at the very beginning between Benavides and Salud did not um, pan out. Benavides said he's going to go out and put a, a quick one-two punch on him and see what uh, get his attention. But he didn't do that. He's fighting cautiously much more cautiously than he had said he would. And he got to get, as you mentioned, a contender several years back, a southpaw who uh, likes Salud. 
made his home in Hawaii. Salute, born in the uh, Philippines and then moved to Hawaii at uh, the age of seven. This is a scheduled 10-round junior featherweight bout. It features the WBA champ, Jesus Salud. As we mentioned earlier, it is not a title fight. Benavidez's intention was is to frustrate uh, Salud, make him miss, and uh, get him a little desperate. Salud, in the past, had been a, just a wild, all-out uh, flinging puncher, and they have turned him into a, a West Womble, has turned him into a fine puncher that places much. Therefore, his his knockouts have really gone skyrocket in the last five or six fights with Womble. First round, a feeling out process by both Benavides and Salud. Very cautious. Salud looking to tee off. Benavides showing the hand and foot speed, his greatest assets. Also has very good lateral movement. He will try to get inside with those fast combinations. You don't see Salud throw too many tentative punches. Everything he throws seems to have evil intention in it. He's, he is a strong, strong punching young man. And a good action fighter who has learned to fight under control. More of a puncher than a boxer, but his boxing skills have improved dramatically. In a breakthrough that is sure to fill a growing demand among today's beer drinkers, to round two, Marv Albert along with the fight doctor, Ferdy Pacheco from Corpus Christi, Texas. Jesse Benavides in the gold with the red trim and Jesus Salud also wearing gold trunks with green trim. How did you score the first round? That was so close, it was almost an even round. I had to give it to Salud because the punches are harder and they landed more effectively on Benavides. But Benavides is doing what he wants. He's playing his chess game. He's making him miss. He's frustrating, but he's not landing enough to take the um, to take the round. See that kind of punch? Land high on the forehead of Benavides, drove him back, and then Benavides is backing into the uh, retreat mode. Do you consider Benavides an underachiever? To many boxing people, he's been a a disappointment in light of that superb amateur career. Well, I, I think he, more was expected of him, and he, he didn't fulfill his promise. Uh, he seems to be uh, on the way now. He's uh, with the training that it took to make him a puncher, and the uh, attitude that he's got now, he has a chance to fulfill the promise. He's but had, yes, yes, he it was a disappointment. He's had only one defeat, stopped by Pedro Decima in three rounds. Decima out of Argentina. That was back in July of. 88. Benavides was a world-class amateur fighter. At the 84 Olympic trials, he upset amateur champion Floyd Favors and then lost a close decision to Robert Shannon, a two-time Olympian who made the team. There were two other non-qualifiers for that 84 Olympic team. A couple of familiar names, Ferdy. Mike Tyson, Michael Nunn. Whatever happened to those two guys? Second round, and there is Jesse Benavides' wife, Rhonda, and daughter Jessica. Seems to be enjoying the action. At least Jessica is. Salute putting some very hard punches to the midsection of Benavides, borderline low blows. Right hand by Benavides behind the ear of Salute. Much better round for Benavides this time. He's been landing flurries of, of punches. And uh, out thinking, Salud, who's still looking for that one bomb. Benavides' chin is a question mark. And that one loss to Decima, who had him down three times in three rounds, he had difficulty. While Salud has had problems with cuts and swelling over his eyes. So that will do it for round two. I know what you're thinking. What am I doing making chicken? 
Well, I'm making the most delicious chicken. Here's that low blow that may turn out to be a factor in this fight if they continue, uh, if Salute continues to punch that way. Benavidez's trucks are rather high, as are Salute's. They're both rather high-waisted. So there are going to be a lot of low blows in, these, in this bout. The quickness of Jesse Benavides making Jesus Salud miss on a number of occasions in that second round. Yeah, I gave that round to Benavides because he, he uh, uh, flurried much better. He was much faster now. Thought Salud, who was still looking to get in there with the devastating power that he's got. At one time, Salud was strictly a kamikaze type fighter who did not deal with the defensive uh, skills to go all out offensively, but he has matured in recent years. Well, Benavides is a competitor. You could see it from that exchange just then. They both exchanged powerful punches. Benavides stood there with Salud, knowing what Salud's got in his uh, fist. He stood there and challenged him. And the crowd overreacting every time Benavides throws a punch. Uh, that last left hand just grazed Salud. Salud just doesn't forgive him any movement toward the body. Anything toward the body he can get in, he gets in. For the guy as thin as Benavides, that's going to be a, a, a factor in this fight if it goes past five. And we are just past the halfway mark of round three. Good right hand by Salud. Amazing to see Benavides stand there and wait for that punch like he was mesmerized in front of a Cobra. He just waited for it, and it came. Delivered an uppercut that landed. A good combination by both as they open it up here with 45 seconds left in the third. Benavides scoring with uppercuts. Benavides getting the best of that exchange, out thinking and out punching Salud, who for a moment reverted to that kamikaze style. The speed of Benavides and the brain of Benavides much, much faster than Salud. Oh, the teeing off here in the third. We'll be back after these messages. Today's small cars are tougher than ever on oil. Their high compression engines not only rev high, they can run hotter than regular small car engines. Their searing heat can begin to break down in oil immediately. That's why there's Castrol. Watch his action as Benavides using the superior speed and he keeps his eyes open. He knows exactly where Salute is. As that was going on, the wife and daughter were having some serious thoughts about what daddy does for a living. Look yes. at this. Oh, that's a good left hand, she says. I love that right cross. Jesse's wife, Rhonda, and daughter, Jessica. Jesus Salud is married. His wife, Julia, and four-year-old son, Jordan, go back in San Diego. Chant of Jesse from this crowd here in Corpus Christi, the hometown of Jesse Benavides, although this is the first time in three years that he has fought in his hometown. Well, Salud has got to do something impressive and get this crowd out of the fight right now because they're getting into it. They feel their guys ahead, and in my... Card unofficially is ahead. He's won the last two rounds. Benavides with the combination following up on that effective hook. What a competitor is Jesse Benavides is. He just doesn't give any respect to Salute punching power. He stands and flurries, almost defying Salute to come back.
cautious little movement in this fight. No attempt to take advantage of the left-hand stance. No attempt to neutralize it. Just straight-ahead punching. These two guys are just trying to get at each other. In the amateur ranks, Jesse Benavides, strictly a boxer. His style designed to score points on the amateur scoring system, doing it with speed and defense. But as a pro, Tony Ayala Sr. has tried to turn him into more of a puncher. He's not a one-punch knockout fighter. Usually the knockout set up by combinations. And we can see the combinations here over the first four rounds. Very fast hands and, and very sure punches. They aren't of the same quality as Salute. On the other hand, Salute so dangerous because he does have one punch. Knockout power. Speeding and out slicking salute. Salute coming back looking for those hard ones. Yes, strong right hand delivered by Jesus Salute. Boy, Benavid is boxing beautifully. I mean, he is doing everything you have to do to neutralize a strong, aggressive man like Salute. seconds remaining in this fourth round. We'll be back in Corpus Christi, Texas after these words. A kiss? Oh, um, not right now. You, you really don't want to kiss me. Dangerous. Very dangerous. <laughs> Give me a minute, honey. Don't let morning breath ruin a good morning. Get Scope. Scope has two powerful ingredients to kill 90% of the bacteria that cause morning breath. Didn't I, I hear something about a kiss? That's a determined face of Jesse Bonavides, who's taking these last three rounds on superior boxing skill and intelligence. He's bleeding from the nose, but that's not a factor in this fight at all. This is round five. It is scheduled for 10. The WBA junior featherweight champion, Jesus Salou. Get off, get off. Try to start fighting. Back going to the body because he's an Salou is the WBA champ. Daniel Saragoza of Mexico, the WBC a junior featherweight champion and the IBF title holder, Welcome and Cheetah of South Africa. This is a non title bout. Salute of punching one punch at a time. Salute has got to step up the action, has got to step inside and go to the body. Salute affected by the possibility of having his title stripped because he is. He did go through in this uh, bout against uh, Benavides. He says not. He says it doesn't bother him at all. And I, and I tend to agree with him. Once that bell rings and somebody's pounding you in the face with a red glove, you tend to forget about it whether it's for a title or not. It's for, uh, it's whether you win or not that counts here. And for a nice piece of change. That doesn't enter into it when somebody's pounding on your body. Good body attack. There's the body attack that we were talking about. There's Salud's attack. And now Benavides stepping back. He felt that one. Yes, best flurry of the bout by Salud. Oh, that really slowed down Benavides. And from the corner of Salud, they are screaming, body, body, keep going at it. First time I've ever seen Benavides try. Try to hold on for a while. That He's left, hurt. Yes, the left hand staggered. Benavides. That punch to the side that uh, Salute is landing is really effective. Benavides looks like he's wilting right in front of your eyes. Final 
final seconds. Round five, a strong round for Jesus Salou. These body shots, look at that devastating cook to the side. Just took the air right out of Jesse Benavides. He just didn't have anything left. He's lucky to survive that round. I've never seen such effective body punching. And Salute seems to be back into this fight after losing three rounds in a row after winning the first one. So we're now we're at three and two. And here we go in this most interesting bout. It is round six. With Jesus Salute in the gold with the green trim. And Jesse Benavides in the gold with the red trim. Two guys work both for television fights. Same trunks. Get these guys together, will you, Ferdy? Coordinate things. Coordinate things. Boy, does Salute look determined. That is one gritty warrior. Strong fifth round, effectively going to the body. Benavides excelling in the early rounds with his quickness and getting the combinations in. What's happened here is Salute failed to take advantage of that last round. He should have come out with a thunderous body attack. He's let him go several times when he had him caught on the ropes. He just let him dance away. He's lost his concentration. He should have gone right back to that body. Right hand delivered by Benavides. I'll tell you one thing about Salute. He does not mind taking a punch. I mean, he almost seems to apologize if he missed one. If one misses him, he's, uh, he's used to give and take. In his style, he'll take one to give one, although he has tried to get away from that in recent fights. Under a minute left, sixth round. Salute literally has to run after Jesse Benavides. Salute continues to turn this fight after the early good showing by Jesse Benavides. Just under a half minute to go in round six. No knockdowns, although Benavides was staggered in the fifth round. And it is now Salud who has been doing the stalking. He literally is running after him in certain one of those exchanges. Now, that was a nice exchange by Benavides. to the end of round six. In today's higher revving and hotter running engines, wear is a greater problem than ever before. Oil breakdown can shorten the life of vital engine parts. That's why there's Castrol. Castrol provides maximum protection against viscosity and thermal breakdown. So use Castrol, because driving today can be a grind. Castrol, engineered for today's smaller cars. It's coming. The stars. This is the hand speed of Benavides. Not enough to win him that round, because he was running the whole time. But look at the flurry he puts in there. Enough to discourage Salute from coming on and pounding his body. And this is round seven. Marv Albert with the fight doctor, Ferdy Pacheco from the Memorial Coliseum, downtown Corpus Christi, right alongside the uh, Corpus Christi Bay. What does your uh, scorecard show? I have a dead even, 57-57. Salute coming on now in these last two rounds. The three judges are from Texas, John Whitley, Corpus Christi, Vicki Cole, Dallas, David McCullough from Houston, 
scoring on the 10 point loss system handled by the uh, three judges so you know that uh, Jesus Salud would prefer ending it with one of his Hawaiian punches rather than go to the scorecard. I think he bet. Oh, look at that shot by Salud. A winging hook off the top of Benavidez's head. If that had landed on his jaw, it would have been a good night. He's stronger, is Salud, and he's dominating, but not so much that these rounds are clear cut. I mean, these things can be going either way. I mean, it depends on whether you like to see a, a guy run and fight in defense or you like to see a slugger come after you. But Benavides has noticeably been slowed down. That because of the pounding to the body that he took starting in the early portion of round five. Another good hook by Salud right off the jaw of Benavides. scoring this fight and just looking at it you would have to say salutes in command of this fight the other guy's running from him. oh he's coming back now Benavides coming back nicely and the crowd reacts with Benavides scoring with a series of combinations under a minute left in the seventh round Benavides scored solidly what a jaw on this kid. Salute. Boy, I mean, he took some kind of shot. continues to attempt to trap Benavides in the corner but he has not been able to good action round we'll be right back a kid he punched the WBA junior featherweight champion that's the 122 pound division he's 26 years old born in the Philippines Moved to Hawaii at the age of seven, now lives in San Diego. Record of 33 and three, 16 by knockout. And in the other corner, here comes Jesse Benavides, 26 years old, from Corpus Christi, Texas, 28 and one, 22 by knockout. His only loss stopped by Pedro Decima of Argentina in three rounds. That was back in July of '88. Benavides. A world-class amateur fighter, one of the outstanding amateurs in the early 80s. Won three national gold glove titles, 84 Olympic trials, came up with the upset over champion Floyd Favors, and then he lost a close decision to Robert Shannon, a two-time Olympian. Well, he's drawing on all his Olympic and amateur skills to, as far as footwork is concerned because he's fighting a beautiful amateur fight as far as uh, footwork. Boy, he's getting away from Salute. Salute must feel that he's uh, behind or at the very least on, on in this hometown atmosphere is not going to get a favorable decision. He's got to step it up. He's got to do something much more impressive than this. I would think that has to be his mindset. Three judges from Texas. He was concerned about about fighting in Colombia, South America, not only for his safety, but also in terms of the scoring situation there. But he's here in Texas with three Texas officials. Well, the worst he can do here is lose the fight. In yeah. Colombia, he can lose something considerably more dear. <laughs> Once again, overreaction by the crowd on that, that uppercut from Benavides. Benavides willing to run, run, run and try to steal the fight with the beautiful flourish and combination like he did last time. And you have to wonder why did Salute abandon the body? Why has he forsaken that wonderful attack in the fifth round? You would think his corner would just say stick there one round and don't go anywhere else. Right there. Well, his corner wanted patience from Salud, and they did see that in the early rounds. May have cost him a bit, though, because Benavides was able to score with combinations, and then Salud did step it up by going to the body, and things have slowed down here in the eighth. 
He's got to learn how to cut off a fighter. Watch how clever Benavides is. Just when it looks like he's got the angle to cut him off, he changes direction, goes the other way. Nice boxing on the part of Benavides. Got no shortage of competitiveness. Look, he's willing to willing to lay it out. Salute got a couple of strong right hands in, but Benavides right back. I don't think Benavides would want to trade with Salud. Nine in a schedule for ten. Jesus Salud in the gold with the green trim on the left. And Jesse Benavides now on the left side of your screen. Gold with uh, the red trim. For those of you who love classical boxing, the boxer versus the puncher, we've got it today. Benavides has been so clever in avoiding the bull-like rushes of Salud. Salud, for his part, has not been able to concentrate on the body like he wanted to. And uh, so it's been Benavides kind of sneaking by. There's blood right on the edge of the nose and mouth of Benavides now. Concern, Ronda Benavides looking on. I bet at this point, Salute is glad this isn't a title fight. And think of what it will do for Benavides' chances should he pull this out and win. And that has to make him a number one contender. Although, as we have seen, you never know. Once again, a good combination from Jesse Benavides. What a competitor is Jesse Benavides. He won't back off of the salute. Once he gets him right there where they're going to trade, he stands there and trades. That could be very dangerous for him, but it's worked for him so far. And referee Steve Crossan breaking the fighters. Benavides landing three, four, five punches to one. Salute, stalking, stalking. Benavides now effective with the jab. Just that he's smarter and quicker. And perhaps a greater competitor. Quicker can make you smarter. <laughs> Being smart makes you quick, either way. His corner is exhorting. Salute, come on to the body. What's the matter with you? You're right there. And look at the combination that Benavides throws from every angle. They're uppercuts, wide hooks, inside punches. standing right there as this ninth round comes to a conclusion. one out because unofficial on my scorecard he is behind 87 to 84 to Benavides who all of a sudden has come through his hard times and has used his brain and speed to out slick salute so you feel that salute needs the knockout I think he needs a knockout and uh, I, it certainly doesn't hurt that he's in Corpus Christi journey doesn't hurt that he's got three Texas judges The crowd on its feet as this 10th round gets underway. 10th and final round. The champ of Jesse. A 
Jesus Salud was told in his corner to go for the knockout. Oh, shades of Meldrick Taylor. This guy wants to lay it out in the last round. He just got a stunning right hand. Another left hand by Salud. Salud coming on. There have been no knockdowns, although Benavides was staggered. His legs did buckle earlier in the bout. a good showing by Benavides early in the fight. Then Salud came on midway through, in particular that fifth round when he went to the body. And Benavides rallies here in the final rounds and continues to trade with the heavier puncher Salud. Terrific combination by Benavides as we hit the halfway mark of the final round. continues to score. Big right hand by Benavides. And looking to put Salud down. He's got come up, in trouble. We come up on a minute to go in this final round. I wonder, though, is this dangerous for Benavides? Very, he stay away? Very dangerous. He's taken such a chance. He's worn himself out. Salute is there, but Salute is Rocky himself. What a series of devastating punches and exchanges by Benavides and Salute. Well, Emmanuel Stewart said if there's one thing this kid's got is competitiveness, and you just saw a great example of it. And this is a young man who has certainly changed his style, as we mentioned earlier. He was a boxer, a stylist in his amateur days and his earlier days as a professional. But you can see by virtue of the combinations, he does have the knockout power. Final seconds of the final round. What a performance by the hometown favorite, Jesse Benavides, against the WBA junior featherweight champion, Patience Salo. We'll be back with the decision in just a moment as this crowd reacts. corner of Jesse Benavides obviously feeling that that man has won the fight. That's Tony Ayala Sr. hugging Benavides. So we'll have that decision, but first let's go to the NBC Sports Update. Here's Don Cricky. Thanks, Mark. We go. Don and we are awaiting the decision as Jesse Benavides turned it on in the 10th round a terrific uppercut by Benavides against Jesus Salud and he continued to score with the combination Jesse Benavides fighting in his hometown of Corpus Christi and hearing it from the crowd right throughout again able to deliver and again landing with the uppercut and we are set now for the decision here's ring announcer David Donaldson Ladies and gentlemen, we have a majority decision. Judge Whitley scores it 97-95. Judge Cole judges it 95-95. Judge McCullough judges it 97-93. And our winner in the blue corner, Jesse. Majority decision for Jesse Benavides, and certainly a major step in a quest for a title shot. This a non-title bout with Jesus Salud, the WBA junior, a featherweight champion, not in jeopardy. Let's go to the fight, Doctor. That was an excellent show of boxing skill, but why did you lay it out with a guy in the tenth round? You were so far ahead. I wanted to look impressive. Uh... 
uh, finished strong. I knew that I was outboxing him in my corner, and I thought we were winning the fight. But I felt like I had to go out there and prove, uh, and uh, show a good, uh, make a good show because I th his, most of his strength was gone by that point. In the fifth round, he seemed to be hammering your body. You seemed to wilt right there. Did you? Were you surprised he didn't come back to the body attack? Well, I was. Le I, I stopped for a moment for two rounds, and Emmanuel Stewart said, "No, go back and use your your lateral movements. You don't got to run. Just move lateral movements. He can't. He's, you throw him off every time you, you move to the side. So we went back to the first three rounds. What we were doing? Well, Emmanuel Stewart, at lunch yesterday, you told me one thing about that you loved about this kid was his intense competitiveness. That yes. he, it certainly was evident today. And his ability to dig down deep. But I think the key strategy was after the fifth round, as you mentioned, we saw that the guy was physically too strong for Jesse. So we went back to fighting in spots and moving away in the meantime. Will this make you the number one contender, you think? I don't see why it wouldn't. I beat the world champion. And uh, as far as I'm concerned, I'm a world champion. And uh, I hope that in the people's eyes, I am the champ. I beat a legitimate champion. And I think I, should, I deserve All number right. one. Congratulations Thank for you, an interesting afternoon. And back to Marv Albert at ringside. All right, Ferdy, a majority decision much closer than we anticipated. Ferdy had it 97-93. The, the judge, Dick Cole, had it even at 95-95. John Whitley had it 97-95, as did David McCullough, all three judges from Texas. And now Jesus Salud is with Ferdy. Tough afternoon for you. In the fifth round, you seemed like you had him just doubled over and out of gas with a body attack. Why didn't you stay with that? Uh, I got kind of, um, I seen his nose bleeding, and then I went to the top, and I, I went out of my, um, um, my, I, I lost my um, concentration after that. And did, did, I, did it bother you that this wasn't a title fight? Uh, yeah, I was, I was surprised, but you know, I, I, I don't want to make excuses, and you know, he. Um, well, are you sorry you took this fight? No, no, I, 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 my manager took it, and I, and I follow whatever they say. Have you had to fight this guy again? And you know it's what a what a terrific uh, classical uh, uh, boxer he is. How would you fight him any differently than you did today? I was kind of tight today, and um, I fight him. I press some more and go more to the body. All right. A disappointed uh, salute, and then back to Marv Albert at ringside. All right, Ferdy, a majority decision for Jesse Benavides over Jesus Salute. More boxing coming up next Sunday. Here's a preview of what you will see. Now it's time for the Foot Locker Fight Preview.